Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hey. Hey, for happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Yay. Yay. It's the most <laughs> most glitziest, glamorous, nominationiest day of the year only. <laughs> I know. I, I, I put a suit on and everything. I know. And we, you know how we all feel about you in a suit, Ian. Just, he scrubs yeah. up well, doesn't he, chat? He looks well. So, isn't it? I could do with a bit of a haircut, but I think that's just the <laughs> general vibe of the nation right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> but yeah, so the BAFTA Games 2021 uh, nominations uh, literally just were announced. So we're pretty, mm. we're pretty quick on the mark here. And yeah, I've only really like, I've only had a chance to sort of scan through them because I was setting up the stream, but it looks very exciting. Um, so The Last of Us Part Two is leading the nominations with 13, which, 13. listen to this, it's the most nominated title since the game BAFTAs began in 2004. Well, because we I were think... all shocked about Death Stranding last exactly, year. Exactly, because that had 11, if I recall oh, correctly. Yeah. Um, God of War had 10. Uh, mm. Yeah. Ghost of Tsushima has 10 this year, which, oh, is, wow. which is kind of amazing. Um uh, Ashley Johnson's, uh, it's uh, her third time being nominated um, because she won in 2014 and 2015 for playing Ellie across the game series, which is kind of awesome. So she's up for a, a third, mm -hmm. third time in mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, This is Troy Baker's fifth nomination uh, mm -hmm. because he was nominated in 2014, 2015, 2017, and 2020. <laughs> so... Troy's getting getting all up in there with the nominations. Yeah. But yeah, so, I mean, I guess we should sort of um, maybe just go through all the different categories and chat through stuff and sort of uh, talk about maybe everyone's predictions, um, uh, everything like that. Yeah, that sounds that sounds pretty good to me. Um, and mm -hmm. everyone's, as always happens with, uh, with BAFTA, uh, everyone's like, wait, Ghost of Tsushima was this year? I mean, you're getting that <laughs> even more this year because what is time anymore? But yes, Ghost of Sushima was this year, I know, right? What? Um, My word. It's going to be fun actually looking back at the year. I know. Uh, in games as well and just seeing what's kept us entertained throughout. Um, a period that's exactly of uh, right. uncertainty. So that, yeah, it's going to be a good little look back. Yeah, that's one of my favourite things about about um, getting involved with with BAFTA games stuff because it is the perfect. Not only do we get to celebrate games because games are a powerful force for good and we should be celebrating games, but also yeah, it's just great for you know looking back, seeing what you've missed, um, just talking about the games that made us all happy or made us think or made us feel things. You know. <laughs> Feelings. Feelings, making us feel things. How dare they? But before we get started, I have uh, the, the sort of uh, sizzle reel of all the noms or all the nominated games. It's just a clip of every single game that's nominated, I think. So we should play that right now. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> bit of Animal Crossing, bit of Hades, there must be thousands bit of Ghost of, of Tsushima. I would do it all over again. Yeah. Nothing happened. You're alive and well. Trains. Trains! <laughs> do do? That's some good looking games on this. I know. Everyone at Night City HQ is on edge. I'll make her pay. Do you surrender? Yes! I'm with you every step of the way. Yeah. We're gonna have to fight to get out of this, okay? This is what makes us so right. Family. She doesn't get to be more important than that. Yes. Who do you think you're talking to? Yes. <laughs> I promise. I killed you with my own. Yay! 
And there you go. There we go. Yeah. I tell you what, watching that back, like, there's some amazing games uh, in there. Uh, but also, there's still a, f a, f a, f a fair few games in there that I haven't played yet. I and know. I'm like, I if they're up for awards, I need to play them. Like, I, you know, deal of approval, but where's the time? I know. It's always the way, though. Like, every year, I think, oh, I've been I've been so diligent this year. I've played all of the games, and I don't think, mm -hmm. like, I've missed... I, there's no blind spots in my, you know, in my repertoire at all. And then these nominations come around, and I'm like, damn. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't totally. been good enough. <laughs> I was very happy to see some Demon Souls in there. Me too. That's been, that was a good one for me, me this too. year. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know. If anyone watching this channel yeah. will know that we that was a that was a great time for us. Um, mm. Although I still can't quite believe that we got through it that fast, but I know five <laughs> five episodes smashed it. I know. Um, okay, so should we start with uh, let's start with animation. Um, cool. So for animation, we've got Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ma Spider Man Miles Morales, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Spiritfarer, and The Last of Us Part Two. That sounds about right to me. Yeah. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I was trying to mime each one. <laughs> that was uh, a knife in I the skull see. of the clicker. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> I could see it just passing through all the mushroomy tissue. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, you know, I can not I can definitely see why uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, uh, Miles mm -hmm. Morales, and The Last of Us Part Two. I probably would have predicted they would fall into this category. But it's really nice yeah. to see titles like Spiritfarer and Ori nominated mm. alongside those as well. Because I think animation, sometimes people think of it as like, oh, it's, you know, being as photorealistic as possible. But I don't think that's necessarily true. I think it's about like showing style um, mm. as well and, and maybe just like, you know, having a particular visual style that really translates to, to like what the game is, is doing and, and what mm. it's trying to say, right? Yeah, totally. Like Will, uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, I've not actually played yet, but the original I did play and the animation in that was, uh, it was fantastic. Like um, if you've ever played it before, the first opening moments are really like heartbreaking. Like, mm. It's not often that a game, you know, makes you, well, m me dead inside, <laughs> makes me feel things. But the yeah, the, the intro... Uh, to that and the the beautiful flowing mm. animation of that um, were great. So I, I imagine uh, it's just um, more of the same and much better yeah. for Will of the Whips. Uh, Will of the Whips. But Will I was also um, one of the games I did play that's on there, Doom Eternal. Yes. Uh, that does have great animation uh, <laughs> in terms of just completely obliterating your foes. Uh, the glory kill, the glory kills are back Ooh. with a vengeance and. Um, yeah, there's things, some beautiful fountains of blood. Yes, and also with with things like Doom, right? It's the mm -hmm. animation is really important to making because that has to feel super smooth, right? Like super mm. slick and really like just just very fluid. And yeah, the all animation has to, is so important to that. Yeah, the combat has to flow. It has to feel like a dance of death. It has to, you know, you can't have animations just suddenly jump into mm. other little animations and shortcuts it's got to have this maintain this awesome flow of destruction and uh, doom eternal did that really really yes, well definitely um and then we've got artistic achievement which Ooh. so we've got cyberpunk 2077 mm -hmm. we've got dreams we've got ghost of tsushima we've got hades we've got half-life alex and the last of us part two that's a that's a strong list there. And in fact, Brilliant. you know what? While we're going to talk through this, I'm going to play some Hades. So you're going to what? I'm going to what? So let me just. Nice. Are you playing that on PlayStation by any chance? I I am not. I'm playing it on you're Switch. Not... Uh, I can't watch you play it on Switch. Although for some reason it's showing my PlayStation right now, even though it's my <laughs> Switch that's uh, plugged in. So let me just check that out really quick. Why are you doing okay, well, that? Okay, well, while you have a little fiddle, yeah. I'll bring up the chats and I'll see who is um, joining us today and who is chatting. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Where is it? I've got so many windows open at the moment. Oh, tell me about it. Here we go. Here we go. I hope everyone's doing all right. This is a lot earlier than uh, when we the stream as well. I've got, uh, I'm on my third coffee. Well, actually, I'm on a can of caffeine now. But <laughs> Two giant mugs of coffee as big as my head to kind of wake me up. You gotta. Um, you just gotta. We've had a brand new member, Benedict on Games. High five, Benedict. Thank you very much. Welcome. For supporting the channel. 
Uh, there may have been some more, but I've only just opened the window. Oh, um, right. But hello to people like Dragon Brother and Danny McNamara, Lindsay Langdon, Pink Magpie. Hello. Uh, Nightcats here. Uh, Van Buren Phillips. Did you folks play Carrion, says Van Buren Phillips? I did. I, I played uh, quite a bit of Carrion. I don't know much about Carrion, I have to say. Uh, it's up for an award. I can't remember what award it was up for. Uh, but uh, I, it, it was a little bit disappointing for me, Carrie. And I think in my head, I've built it up to be something different to what it was. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it, the trailers made it look like a, a, the sort of game where you go around and you you mercilessly prey on all these poor little NPCs. Like, you know, like a, a, a bad guy simulator almost. <laughs> where you play this amorphous blob that looks like something out of the John Carpenter's The Thing. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was like, all up for that, but um, in the end, it turned into um, more of like a um, uh, what's it, a Metroidvania style game, and the level layouts got very confusing, and I, I found myself like the gameplay would just grind to a halt when I'd get stuck. Yeah, uh, and okay. I, I think a few people had that problem, but hmm. uh, when it was when it was in full flow, it was amazing. But okay. I just yeah. The pacing was a bit out, I thought. Debut game, it's up for. Debut uh, game, all right. Let's see what else we've got here on the list. I don't know why my Elgato is just deciding that we're going to play PlayStation <laughs> instead, because it's not plugged into PlayStation, so I'm I'm a little bit puzzled by that. Uh, there must be a ghost of Tsushima in the machine. Oh, God, yes. I suppose <laughs> you could say that, yes. Let me plug it back into the PlayStation and see if anything happens there. It's what very, blip? very, very bizarre. Um... I guess it just doesn't want me to absolutely kill everything in Hades, because I will. Best game. Um, all right. So good at Hades now. Well, I have played it enough, you know. That. I've played yeah, it. I've played I, it quite a bit. I haven't played it at all. Do you know? I really, I keep meaning to play it. My problem is, I do own it, but I own it on PC, and it feels like the sort of game I want to sit on my comfy chair and play. Oh, I not, see. Like sit up at this desk and play. So I. I I just need to find a time to play it and be uh, a good excuse to buy it again. <laughs> yeah, so I can actually play it. I do. Um, I do recommend it for sure. Yeah. Like it's so so good. Yeah, well, I'm a huge huge fan of those types of games. Like I love Binding of Isaac and Enter the Gungeon. Mm. And things like that. So, uh, what was that um, '80s themed one that we played with the? It was like Toxic. Oh, Rad. Uh, Yes, Rad. Yeah, that's Stuff really fun. Out, yeah. I liked Rad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Big well, fan. um, so I've got, so I've got, uh, I've got myself a PlayStation now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, shall I? Okay. What shall I play? Shall I play a little bit of? We've we've talked a bit about Ghost of Tsushima. We've talked a bit about mm. The Last of Us Part Two. I can play some of those. Um, while we just chat through. So, um, artistic achievement is like yeah it's those those games that you think of when you're like you know super gorgeous to look at right mm. um really stylish really well conceived that kind of thing um and i think this list for me is super super strong because yeah these games are all just there's uh, the only one i haven't played actually is half-life alex which i know you've played quite a lot yeah i mean if if there's ever a um a game that's really blown me away visually it's half-life alex the the just the quality of the world building in that game and the level of detail of uh not only your immediate surroundings but you know off into the distance everything seems living and alive and it, it just tran it VR transports you to other worlds mm, anyway, but massively. this does something special. Uh, the first opening scene in Half-Life Alex, you, you kind of awaken on this balcony and in front of you, City 17 stretches out and it's quite quiet. And then all of a sudden these striders come past in the distance. You're like, whoa. Like, <laughs> and you can look up and there's like alien craft and big like pipes and things. And then you can, <laughs> I, um, you can go into this conservatory and there's a, a window and you can just pick up a pen and you can just start doodling oh, yeah. on the window in front of you. And that's a great touch because not only do, does it bring you like this physical presence of being in the world, there's also, it, it does a good job of showcasing the depth that VR gives you. So you're mm. looking at this window and drawing on it. But, you know, you, you 
out in the background the city's still moving and stuff and it's it would just be like looking out yeah. of a real window and, and drawing uh it, it's just, it's a simple trick but it really super makes works, the world yeah. believable yeah uh thanks to dodger for the super chat by the way Yay. and high five to peter gray for being a new member yeah. it's kind of i i guess it shouldn't really surprise me all that much but it kind of surprises me that Half-Life Alex has four nominations because as far as I know from speaking to people who have played it, everyone absolutely adored it. But it seems like mm. it was quite uh, inaccessible to a lot of people as well. Not that that's like, obviously, it's still a great achievement, but I feel like a lot of people just didn't get the chance to play it. Yeah, it's it's terribly, um, it's terrible that more people can't go hands on with it at the moment because mm. it is, uh, it's phenomenal. The stir of the writing the 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 scares like it's just an incredible like cinematic experience it's like playing it's like starring in your very own half-life movie yeah almost uh and uh yeah it would be great if more people could play it perhaps we've had an announcement of playstation vr2 coming not this year maybe next year perhaps with the power of playstation 5 we could see um a half-life alex coming to consoles at some point it's not like um we haven't had uh, valve games and half-life games on console Mm. before and it would be awesome if uh, more of a more of an audience could be um you know (laughs) i'm gonna say subjected to it because the hotel Holy crap. The hotel in Half-Life Alex is Terrifying. one of the scariest things I've ever played. Is that the Jeff oh, my... thing? No, Jeff com- Jeff actually comes later and it's a different type of scare. Jeff is okay. like a you're being hunted okay. kind of scare. And the hotel is just like a an onslaught of enemies. Every time you think you, you've nearly done, something else is jumping <gasps> out at you. And it's just, By the time I'd left the hotel, I was like, oh my God. No, thanks. No way. <laughs> yeah. Not a chance, sir. No. no. But I do think um I do think Ghost of Tsushima is is very deserving of artistic achievement as well because mm. it there there were bits in like it's just the kind of game that has such attention to detail to every single frame because obviously you had the um the the samurai cinema mode the Akira Kurosawa um sort of uh homage if you will mm. where you could play like you can play it in you know black and white with film grain um and just everything about it like for, there were bits where you know the sun setting and you've got that gorgeous light bloom and you're just riding through the sea of pampas grass and it's just stunningly beautiful um it looks amazing so, uh, this was one of the ones on the list i've not played yet and just oh. looking down at the uh, youtube feed now and seeing you ride through all that grass and the storm and the distance that is yeah. just that's magnificent, isn't it look at the wind blowing past you i also really like it when games um make an effort to eliminate hud especially hmm. nar- narrative based games that, that kind of try and make the world um really just just sort of stand on its own like uh in in this like look at all those particles look at those particles look at all these leaves <laughs> but like in this um instead of having you know that the sort of glowing path that lights your 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 way to like the waypoint when you're on your horse or whatever in this you have like that that wind and you know you just kind of you pull up on the on the touchpad and it, and the wind sort of picks up and shows you where to go and i think that's just a really nice natural kind of organic way of doing that mm. it's really nice um but then oh there's a bird as well <laughs> <laughs> so then we have after um artistic achievement we've got audio achievement and in audio achievement we've got astro's playroom we've got ghost of tsushima we've got hades we've got half-life alex uh marvel spider-man miles morales and the last of us part two the one that kind of stands out to me in that list, first off, is um, actually Astro's Playroom. Because, <laughs> and I know that sounds funny, but it's because um, when I first uh, put Astro's Playroom on, mm-hmm. like, I mean, it's it's obviously it, it was it was sort of pre-installed on every um, new uh, PlayStation Five, and yep. why is that not let me play that? Um, and uh, it's it's it was made to show off the capabilities of you know the dual sense controller but like mm. 
I didn't have any interest in the dual sense. And then when I played Astro's Playroom, like when you're, you know, you can hear the little guy inside the controller or when you're like tippy tapping across like a glass surface as opposed to yeah, like a metal surface. Yeah, footsteps are adorable. It's kind of amazing though, because it really yeah. does. I think the audio is so important to that because it's, you know, it's just that tiny little th thing that actually yeah. makes it feel next gen you know yeah totally and also i don't know if i'm going to sound very old saying this but the 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 soundtrack the music for each uh each, each level of they're a bop is that, <laughs> they're is that, a what, bop. Is that what people say now i don't know <laughs> sure yeah. the, the, the little songs that, that are played as you as you jump in through the level and yeah. occasion you can see these little robots in uh well, floating in the like pad, a singing right? along yeah oh. yeah oh, i love i love the songs in astro's playroom and um astro's um vr game mm. as well they, astro's they're just oh, so right. happy yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah astrobot rescue mission that's the one and uh, what else do we have? We have, uh, well, Half-Life Alex. I, I don't like, do you think there are different considerations f towards audio in a VR game as opposed to your traditional kind of 2D game? Sorry, in a, in a, so. in a VR game, yeah. Yeah, well, VR, it really relies a lot on 3D sound building and um, making your world sound accurate to real life. If you're presenting a game like half-life alex which is you know high realism graphics you're going to want some highly realistic sounds mm. and um there's uh, a really good area uh, set in a disused lawn laundromat okay. and when these like uh, electric head crabs are chasing you, uh, you before you see them they're scuttering around you can hear them running around oh. behind you and then a knock like plastic uh, washing up liquid uh, bottles off the shelves and you're hearing clunk, 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 clunk. And it's all just little incidental pieces of sound that build up like this completely terrifying uh, scenario in your head. Um, so yeah, they did a really great job um, with that in, um, yeah. in the Half-Life Alex. But also um, The Last of Us Part Two. I love the fact that that's in um, audio achievement because I watched a couple of videos yeah. uh, of, uh, of of how they made the clicker sounds. Oh, uh, and how they had like the um, the voice actors like uh, making different kind of pain noises and oh. the uh, the the, um, the motivations for the different kind of noises they were making for the clickers and stuff. There's so many. I love that I, stuff. Yeah, like I kind of thought, you know, when you're playing, you just think, oh, scary zombie. But then you, you see some behind the scenes <laughs> stuff and, you know, think about what kind of um, thought processes go through to creating these monsters and kind of giving them personalities yeah. and like, almost like the pain of their cries is like drawing from partial bits of their past life that they can remember and stuff. <sighs> and so, yeah, so it's quite. And then playing it back, knowing that. Mm. Um, it's kind of makes it even more haunting. That's so, so true, a big actually. Fan of that. Yeah, I love hearing stories about. I, I find Foley really fascinating. Mm. How you? Because I mean, I know a lot of it's done digitally nowadays. But like mm. when uh, when companies really sort of go the extra mile to like create authentic soundscapes, it's it's always really interesting to me hearing how they did it because it's it's never what you'd expect. Mm. Or like they always think outside the box when you're when they're like, okay, what is like, what do bones breaking? What would they sound like? You know? Yeah, celery or something. They'll be like, yeah. <laughs> like, How did you make that sound like a bone? <laughs> Sorry, I'm uh, not. Oh, opinions. No, no worries. Weighty opinions done a super chat saying no nomination for Ran Lost Islands. I'm sure that was Ian's <laughs> game of the year. Uh, no, that was definitely not my game of the year. Um, I'm not surprised that's not for a moment, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, Katie Marie also has done a super chat saying, what do you think of the lack of nominations for AC Valhalla? Do you think it will have a, uh, implications for future AC games? That's one for Zoe, really, because yeah. I've not played it. No, well, um, I, I played a little bit of it, but I kind of bounced <laughs> off it quite hard. Mm. I just, for me, f okay, so for me, BAFTA is about excellence, right? And that's, and and that's kind of what because I've been on BAFTA juries before, and um, that's kind of what they say when when you when you're you know sitting around to discuss um, the the kind of long list that you, that you're given, and f looking at looking at Valhalla this year, it's sure it's it's a it's a great game, and I think the people who love 
AC have seem to have enjoyed it. Um, mm. But what is it that's kind of pushing the boundaries? And what is is there anything about it that you know is sort of um, t- sort of you know upholding that excellence? Um, mm. Because that's intentionally vague, obviously, because it, it excellence means different things to different people. But I think you might be hard pressed to find, uh, you know, areas in which Valhalla really kind of tried something new in terms of the the AC formula that's already as mm. as it's already kind of known. I mean, maybe people yeah. disagree with that, but that's kind of what I would say. Odyssey was um, quite a game changer in terms of the yeah. formula, and so that was that was definitely made more people go wow okay this mm. is this is a new direction yeah and uh, perhaps Valhalla was yeah a bit more of the same and yeah and you know what innovation. and 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 to answer the second part of that question mm. um you know will uh will it change will it have implications for future AC games I mean I I don't know I think Ubisoft just knows its audience at this point right like it's kind mm. of it's targeting people who love AC who they know will kind of you know enjoy those games without too much change up or shake up to the formula but may, then mm. again maybe it depends on what what they kind of want to achieve with them um but also they're kind of like i mean their their uh, development times are longer now right yeah yeah, yeah um, i'm not surprised with the games of those size well yeah i know <laughs> it's <Yeah. laughs> so massive yeah. um okay so Best game. Should we talk about best game? Oh, my. Yeah. Yes. Quickly, before we talk about best game, though, uh, Angel Beat. I missed Angel Beat's Super Chat. says, thanks for the great content. Any chance of more Neo? Your stream really got me into Neo, too. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad. Um, I don't know. Maybe. There's not a lot coming out at the moment, so we can go back <laughs> to it. But, um, yeah, I I would need to kind of reacquaint myself with the controls because... It was it was kind of like it was sort of like Dark Souls, but not really like Dark Souls. Mm. So it was quite it was kind of difficult for me in that way because it was like, <laughs> you know, confusing. Um, yeah, you have to kind of retrain your muscle memory. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> never say never. Best. Never say never. No. <laughs> um, okay, best game. Okay, best game. We've Ooh, got this is a big one. we've got Animal Crossing New Horizons, which mm-hmm. yes, I can totally see that. Ghost of Tsushima, amazing. Hades, yes. Half Life <laughs> Alex, amazing. Yes. Wow. Um, <laughs> Spider Man Miles Morales, yes. Nice. And The Last of Us Part Two. I mean, those are all, those are all what I, they're the games that I would expect to be on there for sure. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a tough call, this one. Mm. So definite. I mean, like, th- games like Animal Crossing New Horizons, isn't that just like the poster game of last year in so many ways? Animal Crossing New Horizons came at exactly the right time for the world mm-hmm. like we needed that we game did. at that point we um, really did it, it came and it held our hands and it gave us gave us lovely times through one of the hardest times it's so true and um yeah like honestly that's i would be surprised if that didn't win just because you reckon? of just because of cultural impact of the world and how so many people were playing it, it mm. spawned memes. Celebrities were playing it. Well, uh, it just, it, it just, yeah, it kind of was a huge thing for the world. I think. That is very true, and you know what? And and some certainly a lot of that will be taken into consideration. Although I have to say that um, mm. I think a lot of the times. Um, when uh, BAFTA juries are convening, um, they are they can be encouraged to sort of um, take uh, some of some of the cultural uh, or the you know the sort of the hype around games away and judge games just purely um, on their own merit, which is, is so difficult oh. to do, right? But um, but I mm. think that that is something that yeah, I finally got the switch working. All right, <laughs> yay! Right, I'm getting Hades on the go now. Yes. No worries. Uh... Well, yeah, like so. I've not played Ghost of Tsushima, and I've um, I've not played Hades. Mm. Uh, Half Life Alex, I think, is is incredible. Um, whether it would win best game, I'm not 100 percent sure. Technically, technical accomplishment is way up there. Mm. Um, the, the writing and the voice acting is incredible. But yeah. um, I just wonder whether not as many people being able to play it is going to hurt it in that regard. Uh, Marvel's Spider-Man Mars Morales, though. Yes. You know, what a beautiful game. <sighs> An interactive Marvel movie. Mm. Uh, it's just, you Did... know, it, it 
What was I say? Did you play much of um, of Miles Morales? I've played a, a, f a few hours now. I haven't um, completed it. I kind of I had to play it when it first came out to capture stuff for Happy Hour Tavern Time, mm. and you know, and, and then I kept playing. And uh, but then other stuff came up that I had to play, and I kind of yeah. put it aside. But I remember like the big epic scenes were just you know they, it felt like a blockbuster game. It yes. felt like the the Marvel cinematic experience yeah. in my hands kind of thing. So. You're so right, actually, and mm. yeah, that is that's such a good way to put it. It is like it was that sort of blockbuster experience, and it, I like absolutely charged through it like super super quickly because <laughs> I really really loved it. Um, and it, it's it's quite short, I think, and you know, mm. but it's it's for for what it you know it was essentially for so much confusion when it first came out, right? When people were like, is it uh, is it a spin-off? Is it a standalone? <laughs> is it DLC? We don't really know. Mm -hmm. Like, they've done amazingly with it. And it, it it is its own thing. It's so tonally different, you know, from, uh, from Spider-Man, the first, I mean, the PS4 game. It's so, so good. And like, they had some amazing character moments um Najee Jeter who voices um uh Miles is just incredible um like uh, Miles Morales is such a such a good character and it, for years you know obviously when Into the Spider-Verse happened um you know everyone was it's it start people started taking notice of Miles and now I hope with this this game uh we start, th this is just the start of the miles morales mm. kind of uh you know game sphere like i really hope they carry on his story and i think the end of that of that game certainly hinted towards that <laughs> um for sure uh let's see what what else have we got like so yeah i mean hades i'm trying to get it working here my my uh Elgato is being very, very strange, I have to say. Yeah. Um, it's just freezing. Uh, but um, well. I will I will persevere, and uh, I'll keep having a look at it. But um, yeah, Keep the, having a fiddle. We haven't talked much about The Last of Us, because I guess we're sort of yeah. saving that, because like, it's nominated in quite a few categories, has to be it said. It is. Um, it really is. But, I mean, The Last of Us Part 2. So... I can't remember the last time. I think I, I think it was like three in the morning uh, <laughs> when I was sort of getting towards the end of that game because I'd mm. kind of like mainlined it because uh, I was doing it for review and uh, yeah. and so obviously there was that reason, but also I just couldn't put it down because mm. there was just I think there I can't remember many games where you know you start playing it and you're like. I have no idea where this is going, like yeah. none at all. Um, and when the ending happened, I kind of just didn't really, I didn't know what to think, what to feel. I was just kind of in shock. Um, mm. No spoilers in case I no. guess nobody's played it, but um, it's, I love, I love the fact that, you know, kind of considerations of, uh, of, the studio's working conditions aside for now. Um, I kind of love how Naughty Dog wasn't afraid to kill its darlings. You know, the, mm -hmm. obviously a lot of people were upset because so much of the game leaked before um, before it came out. And, you know, people were kind of getting spoilers completely out of context. And obviously a toxic part of the internet just got involved anyway. But I just really love that Naughty Dog kind of it must have known it was going to get criticism for some of the choices that it made in that story, and mm. it did it anyway. You know, it could have gone yeah. down such a such uh, a, a much safer route, and it mm. and it just said, "Nah, we're not going to do that." And I and I kind of yeah. love that. I think yeah, Naughty Dog's whole approach with the Last of Us games is to kind of like make you feel the kind of the the the. I said the rage, but the the feelings that you would feel in the situations that the characters are in, and uh, I haven't played a game like that really that has elicited such responses of like the anger and sadness in me, and you know, like 
sometimes you, you think that the last of us like if you're watching it and you don't have any context you might think that is a that's a really brutal game there's a lot of violence in there but it ground the stuff that you see and the stuff you do really grounds you in the world and mm. you're you're following ellie and the other characters on their journey uh and I, like I said, it's hard to say anything without spoilers. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> if you've come to know the characters, then the, their choices, sometimes their choices make you go, what? Yeah. But also, yeah, 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 yeah. I totally you get can that. You kind of see why they're doing it. I it's, totally get it. They're not writing a Hollywood ending. Well, yeah. And that's it's... the thing. Like, how many video games do you see people act like people and not like mm. protagonists or, you know, superheroes or. Yeah. somewhat elevated caricatures of how people actually behave. Do you know what I mean? Because it's so, yeah. how hard is it? It's so difficult to do that in a video game, have nuance. Like mm. it's almost like we're always, because so many video games are, they're power fantasies, right? You're, you're supposed yeah. to feel strong. You're supposed to feel righteous. You're supposed to feel in control because that's the entire mm. point. But this is a game where you are made to feel out of control. You're made to feel like, you're made to question everything that these characters mm. that, you're, that you sh do love are doing. And that's yeah. almost too emotionally mature, I think, for like, yeah. obviously a lot of people that ended up picking that game up. But my God, I'm so, I'm so glad that things like that exist because that is what pushes narrative forward in, in so yeah, many ways, totally. right? Like, yeah, yeah. You, you, I lo like you said, like a lot of the games you play, especially in the past, like 10 years ago, every game character was this bland super soldier mm -hmm. who just gruff voiced their way through a mission. Mm -hmm. And here you're playing or following the story of fallible people, people that in high pressure situations mm -hmm. are making choices that may seem, uh, you know, terrible or yeah. whatever to to you sat on your couch with you know a clear head but in the moment of yeah. where they are and stuff like you know it's i it's mm. uh what they did is um and fantastic think, and, and think of all the layers that that are necessary to make that like apparent as well like it it's mm. not easy at all and and they no. achieved it it's so so cool i know we're not talking about narrative right now but like i, I feel <laughs> like that's the, that's the first thing that i think of when i when i you know want to talk about the last of us part two um yeah but yeah so british game is next uh Ooh. we've got dreams we've got nice. f1 2020 we've got Late. fall guys mm -hmm. uh Roki, i hope i'm saying Roki. that right sack boy mm -hmm. a big adventure uh, mm -hmm. And the last campfire. Ooh. So there you go. I'm really well, think... loving how great Dreams is sort of doing as well. Like yeah. Dreams is one of those things that you're like, I'm so glad it exists. And the people yeah, use totally. It. I've um, the, out of those uh, five, six, five, I can't count. Six. Out of those six, uh, Dreams is probably the one I've played the most, especially okay. recently. Um, the the talent. Uh, in the uh, media molecule team is incredible like they to be able to make a game that's fun to play but that also allows you to make your own games yeah is is tricky enough but when like i've played a lot of games where you can make your own games before and yeah. they're, they're always a bit rubbishy yeah um, and when you play through the dream, when you go dream surfing in dreams, you'll always find a few beginner ones, and <laughs> a few ones that just, you know, someone slapped together and maybe got bored halfway through. But the amount of experiences that I stumble across in dreams that are literally like blow my mind. It's, it's incredible. The fact that they've made this place to be artistic yeah. in video game land with just a controller. You can make, whatever you want with a little bit of time and practice uh, has to be applauded. They have done so well with it's it. It's amazing when you think about it, yeah. And mm. obviously um, Fall Guys. Fall Guys is actually, mm, yeah, apart from maybe Sackboy, Fall Guys mm -hmm. is the game that I've played most in this lineup. And um, actually for a while I didn't realize it was British, so there you go. Oh, um, right. okay. Yeah. Um, but Fall Guys is another game I think like... Um, like Animal Crossing that really came a, came along at the right time last year, mm. um, and it was it was really a moment, wasn't it? Like, do you, like there was just a time when that's all people were playing. 
Yeah, yeah, that was meme central all yeah. the way, all through the world. Uh, and it, yeah, it it was just great. It was one of those one of the games I featured on my like game of the year list, although mm. I call it genre of the year because it it came at the same moment as Animal Crossing and stuff. It was much more of a social game. Yeah. It was a way for people to get together with their friends and hang out and have a laugh. Yes, away from you know pubs or clubs or you know even <laughs> like you know, just people's like living pubs, rooms. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, it, and it was it's. The comedy little wobbly jelly beanness of it all oh, made it hilarious. It. Yeah. You had the rage inducing fall downs <laughs> and the, the, you know, the last second climaxes of just diving through mm. at the right time. It was, yeah, it were really, um, yeah, a really, uh, a really fun game. I was talking to, to someone about it recently, and I think like the key to that and many other games. Um, to like th their sort of Moorishness, I guess, is the fact that mm. um, even when you're not winning at them you're still having fun yeah you know what i mean like you don't have to be like in first place uh because you know like especially when we're playing stuff we very <laughs> very rarely are in first place but you know yeah. is if you're still having a good time who cares no totally and when you're even when you're spectating as well if you're in a party with your friends and you've all fallen off the edge but you're still spectating <laughs> yeah. your friend, you go, come on come on jump yeah, you jump, did, yes. jump you can do it. <laughs> and then like oh no you fell off it's great it's it's got that kind of like almost live tv yes vibe to it yes totally. i guess but to get um a smooth running game with like a, what is it 60 i think a lot so many different characters all in one yeah. place at the right time without the you know the internet code going absolutely off, uh, yeah. out the window is uh, is a great technical achievement i think sure. i would love i would love to see more games like that um i, th I hope other games take their cue from from what fall guys managed to do last year mm. in kind of creating that sort of big multiplayer um kind of like an like as you say it's live tv because it's it's an event right like it's yeah. not you know you're it's not like a battle royale in the sense well it is a battle, battle royale and it isn't but it's like in the sense that you're you can always see what everyone else is doing mm. um is, so it's more of like a i don't know it's just like kind like of more of, yeah <laughs> like i don't know i like that and i hope i don't mm. feel like many games like that exist yet you know yeah mm. um yeah. but yeah it's pretty um so uh debut game is next and oh. debut game is um airborne kingdom call of the sea carrion uh factorio roki and the falconeer now you said you played a bit of carrion i actually don't know a lot about some of these games so i will definitely need to look some of these up yes i will have to look a few of them up but uh carrion yeah carrion is it's almost like an Ian type of game. Old school, <laughs> side scrolling, pixel art, uh, with like horrible gore thrown in. <laughs> Monster you play in Carrion is just, it's like this amorphous blob. And to move, you just, you move the thumbstick. Um, but instead of just walking or crawling, it kind of shoots out these tendrils and like, okay. <laughs> sticks around. And you have these little um, human NPCs that when they see you, come and they're like they're running oh my god run. they run away <laughs> kind of grab the tendrils and eat them up and it's a really great great idea for a, for, for a playable character in a scenario i was just yeah as i said earlier a little bit let down with the pacing that came into play once okay uh, once the metroidvania stuff right happened. right I'd be like oh i'm at a dead end yeah Where do I because the the i i felt like the levels kind of looked too similar it was hard to f and there wasn't a map i don't think mm. and i found it hard to find my way around or know exactly where i was going and that that was a little bit frustrating for me but visually um yeah i i thought that was a great yeah. one i just think i think debut game is such a great category um because it kind of like <clears throat> it being yeah just even just getting a nomination for a lot of games is such like it, it well it is an achievement but it's such a it's it's like winning anyway because it means <clears throat> you know they get so much so many more eyes on their games that um maybe otherwise they they wouldn't have gotten it's just a really cool um thing i think that uh to be there alongside some of these huge titles um, mm. is really exciting. Um, as you can tell, I'm, ha I'm having to concentrate on the boss <laughs> fight while doing this. Um, I'm a little bit 
behind, I think. Oh, with, oh are you? Uh, okay. Big, um, yeah. So it looks intense. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's pretty intense. Sorry, right. it's it's we're still early on, so I shouldn't be struggling that much. Like, um, uh, okay, evolving game, evolving game. We've got Destiny Two, mm -hmm. we've got Dreams, mm -hmm. we've got Fall Guys, mm -hmm. Fortnite, No Man's Sky, and Sea of Thieves. Ooh, there's some. That's a good. That's a good list of evolving games. I've got to say, there are so many games. Uh, that um, are completely different to how they were when they started. Yeah. To be honest. like, Fortnite has just is the poster, the poster child of evolving games. I'd say like, Fortnite is the, incredible. What it's yeah, done, like the humble beginnings of Tomato Town. To <laughs> now, like I played it yesterday with my wife, and you can now. Uh, there's alien skins in there, and you can be Ellen Ripley. Oh, so and, cool! You know, uh, have a power loader pickaxe and stuff. It's just always, always changing, always yeah. evolving. Yeah, and I mean, let's let's be honest. Like I've said it before, but Fortnite isn't just a game anymore. Fortnite is a platform, like in its mm. own right. Like it's just totally. so incredibly huge, um, and it's great that it's you know how many years has it been out now, and it's still finding new ways to mm. evolve and be different so like you know I, I know a lot of people like it's it's kind of trendy to hate on fortnite a little bit but i genuinely think like if it was a if it was a bad game people wouldn't still be playing it you know that's the thing it, it plays so well it is just it, it's nice and smooth and the shooting feels satisfying mm -hmm. the playstation 5 version that i play uh makes use of the um the dual sense controllers triggers to make it feel like you're pulling gun triggers and mm -hmm. stuff it's yeah, I think uh, I I I was one of those people that a couple of years ago looked down my nose at Fortnite, like my kids' game. But it's actually it it's it looks great, it plays great. It's just a nice chill game to mm -hmm. play with um, my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I you know fair play that they're keeping people's attention because attention spans are pretty short nowadays. Right? Yeah, it's, it's always the next big thing. Um, yeah, and keeping the public. Um, conscience like Fortnite is pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, what else is on there? No Man's Sky. So No you Man's played Sky that recently, right? Yeah, they. Everyone knows the controversy surrounding No Man's Sky's mm -hmm. launch and the amount of. Um, I hate that Hello Games got an anger from the fan mm, base. That thought, a lot of you hate. Know, they were like, you promised us this. It's nothing like this. Well, now it is like what they... It took a bit of time, <laughs> a but now while. it is like what they but promised. But now it is as advertised. More. Yeah, I mean, they they could have just gone, you know what? We're done. Let's move on to the next thing. But they are constantly evolving that game. They're adding more things. Only recently, they added a PlayStation 5-specific update, which not only made the game look great on PlayStation 5, but also uh, gave a boost to the VR stuff. So it's not like a blurry uh smudge anymore you can actually see the majesty of these worlds yeah. in, in vr they've added pets so now you can like find <gasps> animals and you can breed them and you can okay, like, that's awesome. bring your own pets with you uh, and it just keeps just keeps uh just keeps going i i, I just can't wait to see mm. what they're going to do next with it yeah and i mean i think i'm kind of i'm intrigued it feels like maybe it's just because we started playing it again recently but it feels like sea mm. of thieves has had a bit of a renaissance recently right like mm. it, it came out obviously it's we we sort of got bored of it quite quickly well i got bored of it quite quickly i mean johnny's <laughs> yeah, me too, old, johnny's me probably gonna he's probably watching this being like it was always in <laughs> vogue for goodness sake but <laughs> i feel like it's kind of found it's find a bit of its pacing uh, you know a mm. bit more now and it's um it seems just more a bit more self-assured in what it wants to be and i really enjoyed going back to it um last week and i, I hope we can go back to it again soon as well yeah definitely feels like there's more to it i think when we first played it it was quite a hollow experience yeah but now there's stuff going on and it knows what it things. wants to be a bit more now like, yeah. that was my that was my sort of frustration with it originally was um it it was just like the same enemies, the same quests over and over again. And maybe mm. all it did need was time to sort of build up its repertoire in that sense. Mm. I'm doing terribly, totally. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, oh, I got just a couple of super chats quickly before they run off screen. Mm. Dodgers uh, done a super chat saying, good 5.30 a.m. Oh, The last Batman nominee stream I watched with my roomie and Maria. Um, uh, 
Aoife serenaded us with Oklahoma. This time we're joined by <laughs> Zoe and eating crab rangoon for breakfast. Oh, wow. Yes. For breakfast. Nice. Far uh, Cry uh, 4 style crab ooh. rangoon. Oh. Um, Far Cry Falls, Crab Rangoon. So, Lovely. Family Game is next. Uh, and Family Game, uh, can you guess any of the uh, the nominees for Family Game? I think you'll be able to. Family Game. Uh, without looking, I'm going to say, well, Animal Crossing. Yep. It's on there. Uh, Astros? Mm-hmm. It is also on there. What else big Family Game? Was... Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, I can't. No, okay. that's it. All right, I, let I me think. tell you what they are. While I'm getting, uh, while I'm getting murdered by skulls, uh, we've okay. got Animal Crossing. You were correct. Astro's mm -hmm. Playroom, also correct. Nice. Uh, we've got Dreams, which okay. makes total yeah. sense. Uh, mm -hmm. And we've got Fall Guys. We've got Minecraft Dungeons, yeah. and we've got Sackboy. Ooh. Okay. Oh yeah, Sackboy. I have a couple of friends, close friends, who have uh, who have played through Sackboy with their young children, yeah, and uh, had a wonderful time with it. That is a yeah, definitely up there is a very good um, I loved family it. game. We, me and mm. Seb recently uh, played it again, and um, nice. It's just it's just one of those games that like you know you're you're you've not got a lot to do on a Saturday. You're just sitting about. <laughs> you want a game to play, and it's just that great sort of couch co-op that's yeah. so silly and so easygoing, I guess. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's very easy to go, ah, oh, just one more level. Um, yeah. And, you know, like little things like when you're, um, you know, when you're at the end of a level and you're like slapping each other to try and get the trophy <laughs> or like get those photos taken. It's just, it's just so fun. And it's, it's mm. one of those games that like, it's so British, I think, in so many ways, and its sense of humor and stuff. Um, and I just, yeah, I just really, I just really like it. I think it's like very chill, very cute, very cheerful. It's just like a warm hug. It's not too challenging. And those musical levels that it has as yeah. well. Yeah, I that was the one. That was what I was going to bring up. That I can't remember the the song now, but that was the one of the first musical levels. Uh, uh, Uptown it's... Funk. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. I, when that happened, I was just like, oh, it's so good how they managed to get the the music in time yeah, with what you amazing. were doing in the gameplay. And which I guess is like, it's quite something that you don't really think about, but it's be quite difficult to do that as well, because hmm. you have to like uh, prepare for players not doing exactly what you want them to, obviously. Yeah. Oh, feck. Yeah. Sorry, I'm dying really badly here. Good, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's a really, it's a really solid uh, choice for um, for family games. I'm really glad that mm. Dreams is in there as well, because obviously, you know, Dreams is, isn't just about playing games. It's like, especially where family stuff is concerned, it's like helping kids learn to make them a little bit as well. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, it's, it's a, got it's that creative really element. Good, yeah. It, if, if anything, it's a, a really good educational creation tool yeah uh yeah it doesn't teach you uh how to you know code you know properly but it gives you the it grounds you in the basics yeah um to make coding more <laughs> visually uh, yes. to, be, uh, to make you visualize it in your brain it just makes it more, more accessible right like you don't have to have a like an actual um background in coding to make no. it uh, make it possible <laughs> i just lost a death defiance god damn it um oh. okay so what else have we got here uh next oh i really love this category game beyond entertainment um it's a it's one of my favorites just because it's mm. like you know um games that maybe uh are trying to do more than just well just entertain it's in the title mm. so that that could be you know um bringing attention to social issues to um well in the case of ring fit was um i think nominated before um you know getting people healthy or you know things like that so this year um our, the nominations are have you got the list up by the way can you see it i have now yeah yeah, yeah. do you want to read it out so that i can so game beyond entertainment are uh, animal crossing new horizons there's uh, before i forget from threefold games mm -hmm. there's dreams again uh, that's another another one for dreams 
Spirit Fairer by Thunder Brilliant. Lotus to Cowling Knight. It's Tell Me Why. It's Don't Know. Oh, You've uh, you streamed that on this channel, I right? I did. I did. I love Tell Me Why. Mm. I think it's great. And then there's Last of Us Part 2. So another nod for Last of Us Part 2. Oh, all right. Yeah. Mm. I guess because um, obviously it touched on a lot of issues uh, with um, <clears throat> characters like uh, Lev and... Mm. Um, well, yeah, just uh, um, Ellie as well, Ellie and, and Dina's relationship, mm. um, which is wonderful to see, um, you know, a lesbian relationship front and center of like such a mainstream game, um, which was awesome. Oh my God, I'm dying so badly right now. <laughs> um, I can't, I shouldn't have picked Hades to play because now <laughs> Hades has, it's just taken over my life. Okay, oh, there we go. All right. Whew. Right, Grant. Game Beyond Entertainment, here we go. <laughs> no, <clears throat> so tell me why I um, I absolutely love because, and I mean, everyone who you know has watched uh, me stream it on this channel will know, um, having uh, a trans man as, uh, as the main protagonist in uh, a game series and such a big game series, um, it's just it's just so great to see and and tyler was such a a, a fucking awesome character as well <laughs> tyler and uh, and his twin um allison and um the whole story was great because it was many of the reasons that i love life is strange as well that like the the kind of supernatural elements are almost incidental to the the sort of family drama i suppose that's mm. going on um and really just a framing device more than anything. Um, and not only does it, it touch on um, like sort of family issues, um, it also goes into like issues around um, clinket culture being erased in Alaska. Um, hmm. And the obviously the, um, the dev team did a lot of work with GLAAD um, prior to launch to make sure that they were being as respectful as possible. They had, you know, LGBTQ plus people on the development team. And I think it's really important that they not only did that, but were very vocal about doing that because hopefully mm. it, you know, it, it will encourage other um, studios to, to follow suit in the future. Um, and yeah, Animal Crossing New Horizons is an interesting one. Um, I guess it's there because because of the social element and because of maybe mm. what what it ended up doing last year um well of course yeah. you know thinking about it like animal crossing had literal talk shows hosted on it and it had it did, yeah. fashion shows and mm. um like art shows and yeah it was it was more than a game last year wasn't it yeah it, the, it's surprising how much stuff came out of animal crossing if if you think about it really there's a lot of it's quite basic a lot of the stuff that's in there you can't really interact with and things but somehow people brought it to life and brought it outside of the game world a lot more than maybe even the developers anticipated i don't know whether that was because of the mm. time it was in or whatever I think so, yeah uh yeah it definitely it, it leaked out of the switch and into the public conscious for <laughs> definite <laughs> yeah it was it was just everywhere for a mm. while um and still kind of is like it was just yeah. it was really i think it was a really kind of calming grounding thing at the time that when the world literally turned upside down people were sharing these little spaces that they'd created for themselves or mm. these little like i mean you know the fact that we got to meet um do a meet and greet like an EGX meet and greet in it um, that Liam had made. It was just amazing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, little sweatshirt designs and I don't know. And there's something so calming about just collecting fish and bugs in a game that yeah. like... That's, you're right. Yeah, it's it's a very calming game and everyone's yeah. nice and friendly. You know, there's, there's no anger in it. It's mm -mm. just people are like, all the characters are there to make you feel better or just you know just just they just exist and have a nice time yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and you need that you need that sometimes mm. you know just to have i guess the main thing it did was oh god my island's gonna look terrible <laughs> um was it created a space where people could feel mm. safe and could share with other people and just i mean we had a surprise birthday party for one of my friends uh nice. on on their island um 
That's and awesome. Yeah, it was something that we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. So it was really Very nice. Um, okay, game design. So game Games. design, we've got Animal Crossing New Horizons. Mm -hmm. We've got Astro's Playroom, Ghost mm -hmm. of Tsushima, Hades, Half-Life Alex, and The Last of Us Part Two. So we're seeing a lot of the same titles cropping up in some of the major categories. Um, Isabel's going to shout at me. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, these all make sense to me. What I really like, though, is that there's, there's quite a broad um, representation of different genres there. Mm. Games is a, well, see, that's yeah, there's so many different genres there. One mm. that stands out for me, I think, even though it's a very short game, is Astro's Playroom because mm -hmm. mm. that for a company that's not Nintendo, they managed to get a lot of Nintendo magic in that game. There's um, so many moments of like just wow to it like yeah it would be quite easy to do a simple platformer and be like oh here's what happens when you pull the trigger whatever but <laughs> each level was differently themed every section threw something new and exciting at you and something yes. like that would make you go oh this can this controller can do mm -hmm. what and well, yeah think... for that i think it was uh, good yeah and i think that's um a really great thing about Astro's Playroom. I think it's very easy to write off Astro's Playroom as just a tech demo, right? It's just a game that's made that like comes to like it's very easy to devalue it because it's just installed on consoles and obviously when you buy a new console you've got the games that you've bought that you're that you're super excited to try out and sometimes you'll just kind of overlook the the freebie that's thrown in there. Um but Astro's Playroom, like, it's made with such care and such love, I'm going to say, because, like, it is. Mm. Like, there's so many little cute little um, references in there and nods to, to like, because it's basically a love letter to PlayStation, isn't it, Astro's Playroom? Yeah. It's a playable scrapbook of yeah. all of the greatest hits. Um, I, I had such a good time going through it and scouring it for Easter eggs. Mm. Of which there were many. Yeah, there were some like super obscure ones, and then some like more uh, well known. But the way they dressed up the little Astrobot characters, so all the game characters and things, like there's an Aloy mm. one and a Joel and Ellie one, yeah. and ones with like clickers, but they had little oh, yeah. flowers growing off the heads and stuff. Uh, was, yeah, wonderful, wonderful to see. Uh, and, so, and it's yeah. not it's not very easy to do stuff like that, and especially I I think the the mm. way that Astro's Playroom kind of like at first you think you're just in a big warehouse and it turns out you're actually inside uh, like mm. an original PlayStation or, you know, the, you, you when you make your way around a thing, you realize, oh my goodness, it's like the PS2 controller or something like that. <laughs> it was just, there were endless little moments of, oh, wow, that's all. like, it just made you think about things a bit more, but it made it seem really effortless at the same time, mm -hmm. which was really yeah. cool. Yeah, it was it was very cool. Um, one of those that I haven't played, there's Ghost of Tsushima. Mm -hmm. uh, I've said I've not played it before, but in terms of game design, how how um, like what would you compare that to for someone that hasn't played it? It's interesting. Ghost of Tsushima is kind of it's going to sound really it's going to sound like I'm being done in it, but I'm not. But it's very glossy, very kind of you know. Uh, uh, sort of open world um it's it, it's it's very familiar in a lot of ways you know like you've mm. got your main quest markers you've got your side quest markers you've got this open map that slowly uh you know sort of unlocks as you defeat bosses um and then you've got all these little like side quests um of you know uh, Shinto shrines and hot springs and haikus and those are all very similar once you've done them once they don't really change all that much um, okay. so like in terms of game design I'm kind of torn about a Ghost of Tsushima I think that it is very very a very good example of what it is um, mm. I don't think in some ways you know you could say it's not it doesn't innovate but it's a very solid, shiny, uh, mm. 
open world, you know, action adventure, third person title. Like it's uh, there there's there's a lot of systems that work incredibly well together. Like its combat system is on the surface very simple, but you can you can get quite in depth with it and I I mean I think it's it's sort of those things one of those things the more time you spend with it you know, you can get right. by just b button bashing and and, it, and you could play the That's whole game I... like that right <laughs> yeah. and you could and so you could think you could go away from it and think well that was there wasn't much to that but if mm. you spend the time learning to mix up the gadgets and switch your stance in between you know enemies like while you're still like sort of flipping around between them then yeah. it, it sort of becomes this very very stylish experience and uh, that's when it sort of elevates itself to my, in my mind right. um so it's kind of like a, a tried and tested formula but then but the very DPU guy, very yeah 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 very very much that stuff you can find exactly okay. yeah yeah and then you know obviously it's it's a very, very beautiful game as well. And there were things, I'm, like I mentioned, like the wind um, sort of HUD or directional mm. mechanic where you just swipe up and it shows you where to go. Um, and I mean, you know, it's one of those things that like when you're, you, when you're playing it, you're just having a really good time. Like yeah. I platinumed it and I never platinum games. Um, Cause who can be bothered like who yeah. has the time but it's Indeed. one of, but it's it's just it, there's something about it that that you're you're always thinking to yourself oh well i'll just i'll just go over one more hill or i'll just see what's over <laughs> here i'll just i'll just clear out this little bit of the map and then and then i'll call it quits i find things like fog of war incredibly um more like i i, I there's there's something about a game map with with fog of war that i am just I'm hook, line, and sinker. I want to uncover the whole thing. Don't, don't play Valheim. Because <laughs> the fog of war on that would take you. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean about yeah. that. Uh, but, all right, should we move on to multiplayer? Multiplayer, yeah. Multiplayer. So... We've got Animal Crossing New Horizons, mm -hmm. Deep Rock Galactic. Ooh. Deep Rock Galactic, Fall Guys, mm -hmm. Ghost of Tsushima, mm -hmm. uh, Sackboy, A Big Adventure, and Valorant. Yep. So, okay. yeah. Uh, one we've not talked about yet. I I'm going to go for one we've not talked about. That's Deep Rock Galactic. Mm. Uh, we've played that a couple of times for previews on this channel. Um, and I haven't played it a huge amount off, um, off like, euro gamer yeah but um it's i really enjoy the vibe of of uh, deep rock galactic it feels a little bit like an aliens game it could be an aliens <laughs> oh, game oh yeah i guess yeah 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 well, like yeah and these four little dwarfs uh, and you with the mining equipment and you go into these drop pods and you land on these uh planets and then you have to mine down to get the stuff so it's got the mixture of the minecraft mining mechanics and crafting mechanics uh, with this procedurally generated uh, caves full of horrors. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to work together to, you know, hold off these onslaughts of bugs while also trying to get the um, get the resources. And it's, it's just this great combination of combat, teamwork, mm. and mining. And it's quite more. The only reason I haven't played more of it, is, to be honest, is because not none of my friends have it. <laughs> yeah. It feels like a game you could properly get lost in, uh, in the same way that stuff like uh, mm. Minecraft or Valheim, but without the base building mechanics. And yeah. Stuff. Well, I think it's because um, it's the asymmetrical nature of it is, yeah, mm. as you say, if you have like a team of friends who are all equally into it, that could be so great because mm. I think that the way that the different classes work together is really quite harmonious. Like you've got um, the gunner, You've got like the mm -hmm. driller with his big massive drill arms and then you've got like the <laughs> scout and um i forget the fourth one but um the, what is it which again? was the one that the zip one could put down zip lines couldn't i they? think that's the, i think that's the gunner that's, actually there's the okay. scout can put down like uh he's got the big flare which one can put down the big platforms oh, yeah. um but yeah it's just it's one of those games that like the core gameplay loop you know, mm. go out on a mission, mine stuff, shoot the shoot the the um, bugs, and then get out of there with your haul. Like that doesn't change very much, mm. but 
that that loop itself is very very satisfying um mm. every time and i think that the the part that really sort of makes that whole game work is to remember when once you ha have reached your like goal mineral load let's say you've got five minutes or something to get back to the drop pod yes before it takes off without you and you, like that is it's so exciting because like obviously you've got a timer which makes you panic all the bugs start coming after you but also uh, you have to remember how you got yeah you made your path you have to it's find your way back <laughs> out again which is not always easy yeah i'm pretty sure i tried to shut you out of the spacecraft <laughs> you probably did. You <laughs> probably did. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's no, that's. I kind of, I feel like I want to go back and play that now. It's all coming back yeah. to me. Um, totally. What else is on there? Sack boy, great co-op, uh, couch co-op uh, yeah. adventure. Of that's course. not a real painting. Uh, no. Sorry, I'm looking at paintings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Red's here today. Is he? Yeah. yeah. Um. So, Ghost of Sushima. No, I. D D did you did you like do you remember when Ghost of Tsushima's multiplayer came out? Because I didn't no, even know it was multiplayer. <laughs> right, it completely went under the radar, and for mm -hmm. that reason, I thought it wasn't going to be very good. But I actually right. played a bit of it not that long ago, and okay. it's it's like it's really decent. I think the thing that I like about it is that um, it's it's still trying to be um in keeping with the tone of the main game like it's not trying to be like a battle royale or like a death match or like it's still trying to sort of um uphold the kind of core values and and the sort of vibe that the single player campaign had so it's kind of um it, again it's that sort of asymmetrical vibe but like there is an actual through storyline in it where it's like this these sort of they're telling stories of these kind of great achievements and stuff and there's like little sort of arc story arcs through it where like you're fighting this like demon lady and mm. so they've like they were capturing all the twins on an island and they sacrificed them because they wanted that like bond so therefore these enemies are linked by like this kind of like weird magic umbilical cord so you have okay. to you have to kill them at the same time Otherwise, they don't die. So think about it like if you're playing in two player, you have to both like go in for the kill at the same time. Otherwise, it doesn't count. So it kind of encourages that cooperation in a sense. Um, and I just like that it was trying to do something a bit different. Mm. Yeah, I, do, I honestly, it, seeing it in there, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Has it? So was it added I later? Think, the most yeah, it was, it was much later. I think it was like late <clears throat> summer, early autumn last year was it september mm. last year might have been but yeah it um i just i don't i don't know why they didn't um it felt like they just didn't advertise it at, at all yeah i i mean maybe they did but it went completely over mm. my head mm. for sure yeah um but yeah the only other one on here um that we maybe haven't touched on already is valorant um so yeah. so valorant is kind of like a um I guess the best way to explain it is Overwatch meets um, Counter-Strike. Counter -Strike. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's Counter-Strike with abilities. Um, mm. And yeah, it's, I think among people that, that love it, they really, really love it. Cause obviously it's got, um, it's got quite a pedigree being like Riot yeah. Games. Um, and you know, they, they know how to make good sort of esports titles. Um, they do. And uh, yeah, I, I've played a little bit of it uh, again, and um, I really, I really liked it. I mean, maybe I, like I think I was definitely coming at it from more of a I love Overwatch and Apex Legends kind of angle, rather than because I've never played Counter Strike. Um, yeah. And in that sense, I was like, yeah, no, this is this is doing it for me. Um, like I really enjoy the uh, the sort of that kind of really. You know, one, it's kind of a, it's a game where like, if you're doing good, yeah, great, you want to play more. But also, if you're doing really bad, you also want to play more because you never want to quit after a bad uh, match. <laughs> I, I did stream it for this channel when it first came out. That's right. And I was terrible, and I did, I didn't really want to play it very much after. I, you've got to be pretty good with the mouse and keyboard. Well, and I that. was and getting I, some MVP stuff. With were it, you? So, yeah. I was the opposite. Yeah. I was getting that all the time. 
<laughs> least LVP's least valuable player every time. I was the, I can see why people like it, especially the Counter Strike um, fans. Yeah, but it was too fast paced um, for me, and you've got to be very, very accurate. It was like I'd go around a corner and instantly be headshotted. I'm like, where, yeah. where? what? <laughs> So it wasn't really for me, but I can definitely see why um, a big section of like the pro um, yeah. kind of gaming community really dig it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, music next. Music. Um, music make you lose control. Um, and we've got Ghost of Tsushima, mm -hmm. Hades, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Sackboy A Big Adventure, and The Last of Us Part 2. So, what do you think about that? Any of those stand out to you, music, musically? I mean, the, the, the only one that's like made me go, oh, cool music, uh, is Sackboy, because of mm. the uptown punk level. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the way they've made music an interactive part of the environment, mm. I think, definitely uh, makes it deserve at least a nomination. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I really loved... Okay. Um, I really love the use of um, the music in uh, The Last of Us Part Two, specifically, um, if I ever were to lose you, I'd surely lose myself. Any game with Pearl Jam in gets right. a, a, a plus for me. But I also <laughs> love, um, after I spoke to um, Neil Druckmann about it, because uh, cause that song came out like i think literally within the month that uh that the events that lead to the um all everything in uh the last of us part one like with the clickers and everything um mm. I, what do they call that event i can't remember now um but base funganing fun <laughs> let's call it the funganing <laughs> basically that song came out the month of the funganing um right so october 2013 i think um okay and so the way that uh, the way that Neil because he's a big Pearl Jam fan, which is why he wanted mm -hmm. that song in there. Um, the way he kind of said it was, oh, you know, maybe I find like a YouTube video where they kind of they're playing it live, like a preview of the song. And I right. feel like Joel, because he would have loved it, he would have um, mm. he would have played that uh, he would have played that recording that youtube video over and over again until he'd learned the song and i was like okay right. yeah fair enough yeah, okay. yeah. Well, that makes sense and that song is so integral to mm. like joel and ellie's relationship oh, every time um, you hear it in the game yeah. it's like oh my gosh like they right really up until the it. very end um yeah there is uh nods to it so yeah that is i think she, you're right yeah i didn't even yeah I think also, when I first saw the music thing about that song, but yeah, yeah. you're right. And also, um, what's the song that Ellie plays to Dina in the guitar shop? Oh, um, oh no, I'm gonna, uh, I'm <laughs> gonna have to to. Google it. It's on the tip of my tongue. Oh god. Yeah, because that uh, was really good as well, and because it's a very slowed down version of a of a normally quite upbeat song. Take right? on me. That's it. Take on me. I thought it was that, yeah. and I was like, no, I better not say that because it doesn't sound right. But... <laughs> But like it was so gorgeous the way that she played it. Like the fact that it was a song that you wouldn't think of as like a romantic mm. song, I kind of loved it even more. Yeah. But yeah. But so in saying all that, Hades's music is like ingrained in my head, and has been for the last year or so. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah, that's I'm not familiar with Hades' music, mm. um, but if it's anywhere as striking as the uh, the character design and, well, the, yeah. and the graphics, then it's got to be good. And it has to be because you think about it, like Hades being like um, a game that you know is is made to be played. These these levels are made to be played over and over and over and over again. So that music has to be good. It can't be grating. Like it has to be as good the fiftieth time you've heard it uh, as the first time you've heard it. And that's yeah. that's a tall order for <laughs> any composer at all, mm. which is really really cool. Um, so should we move on to narrative? Because let's do it. Let's do it. So we've got oh well there you go. Assassin's Creed Valhalla hey. has a nomination in narrative. So. And I think that's, yeah, because, like, when you think about 
what an undertaking it is to write a story um, that's based in history that has, you know, is kind of like encompassing all of these personal struggles and also so many side quests branching mm. off from that. I don't even know where you'd start. <laughs> no, I, I have no idea where they'd start, but I do know that they turned King Alfred, I believe, might have been the baddie in it. Oh, yeah. And King Alfred, King Alfred is uh, where I grew up. It's famous for the place where King Alfred burnt the cakes. So I'm like, oh, you can't turn King Alfred into a baddie. There's a statue of him in my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> well, we also have Cyberpunk 2077, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition, and Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is... Oh, again, that's a hard one to call. Yeah. I did really love um, the story of Miles Morales. And, like, I loved... Um, the, it really went... It went the extra mile in terms of um, inclusion um, because it had... Um, it has a character who used ASL. Um, mm -hmm. who's just an awesome character as well. Um I think they were they were a brand new character for that game as well. Um, okay. Haley, I don't. Th th I think they were created for the game. Um, hmm. And then also, it's like it's kind of a a tall order to make, you know, quite a well known story um, with uh, Miles and his uncle Aaron Davis, aka the Prowler, to make that, which has been covered obviously multiple times in the comics, to make it feel fresh. Um, hmm. And I definitely think they did that as well as revamping. Uh, kind of already known villains into something completely new like um the tinkerer uh i won't say anything more about that because spoilers <laughs> but yeah i think that it was really really good and it um it was very it was very like it made everything feel very up to date mm. in in interesting ways like i remember a quote that always really stuck out to me um was um they had an art of consultant, Evan Narcisse, who writes for Kotaku, or used to write for Kotaku, um, and he uh, did some work on them with uh, with the narrative um, and the dialogue and stuff like that. And he said that Miles, as a teenager, is much cooler than Peter Parker, and I think that's very true. He's right. like he's a modern day teenager in the sense that Peter Parker is kind of like like they're both te they're both teenagers of their time. Like Pete, Peter was a bit of a loser and he was like, cause he was a bit of a nerd and he didn't know how to talk to girls and blah, blah, blah. Whereas like nowadays, like for Miles Morales, it's not necessarily a bad thing to be a nerd, right? Like it's kind mm -hmm. of a bit more normal to be a nerd and a teenager, or at least it seems to be a bit more accepted. Yeah, um, definitely. And so that's written in, like, Miles is not, he's awkward, but he's not awkward in the way that Peter is awkward. Um, mm -hmm. He's just, he's like, just such an earnest person. Um, yeah. And it's really nice to, like, it just changes everything up to see the way he reacts to people and his family and his friends. And it's really, really nice. Um, and yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, cyberpunk Cyberpunk, I'm kind of interested that that's in there, actually. I wouldn't People have... in the comments are saying that, like, Cyberpunk has, like, a really good story and a fantastic narrative, Gavin says, but I, I've, I've quit playing it. I'm waiting until they patch it a bit because mm. I really want to enjoy the narrative. I really want to get lost in the world they created. Mm. But uh, my... AI sidekick Jackie keeps walking through walls and yeah <laughs> that's the thing uh, yeah I just need it to be patched so that I can uh, that's enjoy true. it, it could it could have a great story wanted, but yeah, yeah a lot of people were kind of turned off by the fact that it was crashing like constantly mm. um all right uh should we move on to original property yes do you want to read this this one out Okay, we've got original property, we've got Carrion, we've got Fall Guys, we've got Ghost of Tsushima, uh, we've got Hades again, we've got Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition, and Spiritfarer mm. as well. So Okay, that's cool. It's nice to see Fall Guys um, in there as well, because, mm. you know, for especially like smaller games, like it just exploded, like, because I feel like at the moment it's... I'm definitely seeing it in cinema and, and maybe games to a lesser extent, but like in a time where 
everything's kind of struggling a little bit or you know a lot of places are having to adapt there's a mm. tendency to fall back on what's familiar and 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 safe um like like we're seeing with films being like oh here's an origin story for Cruella de Vil that you didn't ask for or here's yeah. another marvel series about these characters that we know that you love please watch it please stream it <laughs> um i think that it's really important to shout original property where you can because mm. Because there are inherent risks with original property, but you know the the rewards are huge. If yeah, you get totally. Past. Yeah, and four guys just kind of just taken up to Keshi's castle style yeah. mechanic, and because I think everyone watches like whoever's anyone who's seen Takeshi's Castle on TV is like, oh, I wish I could do that. Yeah. And it it, it kind of bottles that magic and just lets everyone do it. So yeah. Um, and it's never well i i guess because you know it's only got to this point now where internet and whatever is good enough to be able to handle such a massively multiplayer game and you know yeah where everyone's in the same place at the same time but yeah it's the first kind of time there's ever been anything really that captures that kind of takeshi's castle style magic yeah uh, yeah, yeah i was a big fan of it big fan of um how many laughs it gave me so. yeah it is it's like and it's kind of I think that sort of slapstick humor isn't all that easy mm. to do in games as well. But mm. it's just that sort of silly vibe that yeah. is you missing kind from of, a lot um, of things. Yeah, there's a good balance between hilarity and frustration. And, you know, you can laugh at your mates when they fall down yeah. or whatever. <laughs> um, so, yeah, what, what a great, uh, great little piece of uh, original gameplay that I've, yeah, never seen really before. Mm. Um I'm so, big I'm, that. Yeah, I'm glad that um, Hades is in there. Obviously, like I'm, I could talk about Hades all day, but like it's mm -hmm. just for for the 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 thing that Hades is like a rogue light. Um, yeah. That I never really like. I I never really got into before. I could appreciate it for sure, but it wouldn't be something that I would seek out in my downtime to play. I've played so much of Hades <laughs> because it is such a perfect perfect example of that genre and it's i think it's the fact that it listened to its fans so much as well because it was developed very much alongside its community um mm. and that really shows in the end product um and i think that that's something that you know a lot of original properties can learn from is like knowing exactly who you're making this game for and sort of taking that constructive feedback on board which they did you know and now it's like it's just laser focused and it's mm you know it feels good it like it, the, the, all the characters are there like you know and they really speak to its fans and um it's just so so well done but yeah um performer should we move on to performer in a leading role go on then. all right so performer in a leading role we've got ashley johnson as ellie in the uh -oh. last of us part two we've got sharami lee as female v in cyberpunk 2077 Okay. Cody Christian as Cloud Strife in Final Fantasy oh. VII Remake. Uh, Daizuki Su Suji um, as Jin Sakai in Ghost of Tsushima. Laura Bailey as Abby in The Last of Us Part II. Mm -hmm. And Naji Jeter as Miles Morales in Spider Man Miles Morales. That's really strong. That's a really strong category, I'd say. Mm. That is, that I would, is I would struggle. To, I would struggle to call that. I do think Sharami Lee's performance in Cyberpunk as Lady V really stood out to me. It was very, mm. very good. Um, and obviously, there were there were lots of areas in which that game fell down at launch, but the voice acting to me always seemed very strong. And she really gave V that edge that they needed. Um, mm that like made you think yeah, yeah like yeah they're a survivor in this horrible world yeah yeah uh that's a really hard one to call uh or to yeah um i i'd, I'd be tempted to say maybe laura bailey as my yes, pick yes yeah but, um it's hard to say why mm -hmm. because uh, because yeah. of spoilers but um we'll put it this way i think everyone was ready to absolutely detest abby the second yeah. the second she was on screen you you wanted to hate her and mm -hmm. i think it's a real testament to laura bailey's performance that 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 at least for me 
my attitude yeah. completely changed by the end of the game and i was not expecting it to like how like that was an uphill battle for laura bailey the entire game um and i think she absolutely nailed it yeah definitely it, it's uh, like her and ashley johnson are both did such emotion filled mm -hmm. performances mm -hmm. um they both at, at times you kind of you go in between love and hate for them. Yeah, true. Uh, or being angry or yeah. compassionate towards them. Uh, and I, I, I struggle to think of any games I've played where those, uh, where, where actors in it have, um, you know, their performances have, like, I've thought about them for days afterwards. Yes. You know, just really, they've really stuck with me. Um, I've, not played all of Miles Morales. Mm -hmm. um, I have played Final Fantasy VII, although Cody Christensen, uh, Christian, did a, a great job there. Yeah. Um, I, it didn't, you know, I, I wasn't sat there a couple of days afterwards thinking, oh my God, why did, what, did that happen? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, one of those two, I think, for me, the performance. True. No, I do. I think those, I mean, they all did like such fantastic jobs, but um, yeah, I would definitely say, uh, Laura Bailey and Ashley Johnson for for mm. the same kind of reason, but like, yeah, I mean Daisuke Zuji, like Jin Sakai was a great character um, mm. and did a lot with what I think could at times be um, quite a a kind a, a very familiar plot. Like at times mm. it felt like you know this oh this is a story that I've heard before, but Jin Sakai kind of made it his own a little bit um mm. but yeah my like naji jeter is is so so good as miles morales like he just is miles morales um yeah. there's the, there's the, such a vulnerability to him yeah but also a load of energy as well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like such a you, you know the the bottled the teen essence yeah <laughs> and it's, it's there for the character um, yeah and know. and just like um the spider-man ps4 game um mm the uh it's the same kind of deal with um miles morales that a lot of the voice lines they uh recorded twice in two different ways so that miles would be saying it kind of when just sort of static walking around on the street versus when mm. he's like swinging through the air oh cool yeah which is really cool <laughs> i like that a lot um but yeah so um performer in a supporting role Carla Tassara as Judy Alvarez in Cyberpunk 2077 Jeffrey Pierce as Tommy in The Last of Us Part 2 uh, yeah. Logan Cunningham ha as Hades Achilles Poseidon Asterius Charon <laughs> and the storyteller in Hades um, Patrick Gallagher as Coton Khan in Ghost of Tsushima Shannon Woodward as Dina in The Last of Us Part 2 and Troy mm -hmm. Baker as Joel in The Last of Us Part 2 interesting hmm. i will well, say logan cunningham did, i mean there's so logan cunningham is kind of um uh the in-house uh the in-house voiceover person for uh super giant right. um and uh there's there was a twitter video going around uh i think it was late last year where he kind of sort of chatted about like all the different roles and it, it kind of like it's super cut um all of these characters side by side and it mm. really made you kind of think about how how like i had no idea like that some of these characters were voiced by the same person like if you listen to like achilles and hades side by side for example mm. or or asterius and hades side by side you're like what yeah. um it's so cool and it must be so like awesome as a voice actor to have that um ability to take on that yeah. many different roles in a game because you're in-house that's an yeah, amazing amount of range there to be able to do them all and like yeah have different personalities and stuff just with you know one one voice yeah. just being able to do all these different voices uh that kind of that's a standout for me in that category just mm. because of the amount amount of different voices in one game done yeah um, i have to shout out carla to sarah though because i fell in love with judy, judy alvarez yeah, like that like 
immediately. Uh, <laughs> I think everyone had a bit of a crush on Judy when Massively. they met. Massively. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Jo uh, Troy Baker, of course. Um, iconic as Joel. Mm, um, yeah. Uh, Shannon Woodward did a, an, an awesome job as Dina, too. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this is like how many? So one, two, three, three out of uh, six nominations in this category are The Last of Us Part Two. Yeah, they're just, the thing is, like... But that game just gave them more to do, didn't it? Like, yeah. it's, yeah. They weren't side characters. It would be easy to just push them off to the side, but each one had pain and purpose mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, there was there was always some depth to the character rather than just being That's hollow true. That's ai true. companions that were just there to go help me i'm in a hole yeah. get me out you know really good point um, yeah they they felt like people mm -hmm. um and i think that's that was you know obviously a huge part of the success it must be a such a treat as an actor to get to do a game like that that is like so complex and mm. you know that you're not just you're not just sh like shooed into a recording booth and made to like just read out these like line after line after line um mm. like there's it, it's it's you know, more, more and more games now are like this but it's like it's a genuine performance you know it's not yeah. just um cause yeah. it, i wonder how many of the ones in here like because last of us is filmed on a like a big mm -hmm, motion mm -hmm. capture stage i wonder yes. if they did the same i i don't i guess they probably didn't do that for cyberpunk i'm not sure i'm, I'm not sure either actually but maybe they did you know I, I would kind of be surprised if they didn't mm. um i mean yeah, it just... yeah that kind of on stage mm -hmm. vibe that the actors from the last of us and and chatted and stuff have mm. you always see the behind the scenes videos it looks like they're just all covered in motion dots <laughs> yeah and it looks it looks like a proper theater production but it makes uh, all the difference you can tell because they really get in i think the actors really feel an ownership over their characters more that way yeah. and are so much more invested in the performance in that way yeah uh, I, it's again, that's a tricky one, but I think, yeah, Logan Cunningham, though, just for mm. being a master of so many voices. Yeah. But also just because I think that um, in a game like Hades, uh, the characters would almost be incidental, except that. Mm. You know, they, there was a very conscious decision that this that this was a, a rogue light that that made story matter you know and like and they really did do that because like the the gameplay is so so good and so polished and and so much fun but the thing the thing that made me keep coming back was really the story and the characters as well because they're also like i mean the artwork for them is beautiful but like they're so well conceived and well-rounded that you kind of count because you because the way that the game is it's like a big loop right um yeah. that you kind of get a little little glimpse into who they are and then you kind of have to for almost wait until that loop goes around again to get a bit more so like you're just getting a little piece of their character every time and so you you know you might you might have to play the game like and complete it like 10 times before you really get to the the meat of who that person is and i love okay. that that it's using that intrigue as the hook not mm. like not getting to the top of a leaderboard or not like winning the game but just sort of like your your reward is just getting to know these characters better right mm. right we're almost there we've got two more technical achievement and two. ee game of the year yes now technical okay. achievement do you want to read it out go on then so for technical achievement we've got demon souls yeah. we've got doom eternal rock we got dreams <laughs> uh, a flight simulator uh that's uh first appearance on this list oh, marvel yeah. spider-man mars morales and yeah. the last of us part two yeah okay so we've got some brand new titles in this category which is mm. exciting i mean demon souls we could talk about that all day right it is yeah. a technical achievement it's a massive technical oh, achievement the f it's the first basically the first like next gen looking game i've played i when I loaded it up on my PlayStation, like I've played quite a few games on my PlayStation now, and they, they up the graphics a bit, you know. 
I, d I don't think we've seen what the console can deliver just yet. You know, you have to wait about a year for the game developers to get used to the infrastructure of the machine and whatever mm -hmm, before mm -hmm. we see the, the, you know, the big blow away pieces. But Demon Souls, when I turned that on, I was like, holy crap. OK, here we are. It's the next gen. The lighting, the, it... the, the particle effects, the, just the awe of it's, it all. Yeah genuinely wow. draw dropping right the fact mm. that there's like barely no load times mm -hmm. the it just looks so realistic in some points that it was like yeah. i played it and i was like oh this is what next gen looks like mm -hmm. got it totally it yeah uh it's the one game when my friends are like oh, i've just managed to get a playstation 5 what should i get and i'm like <laughs> it's hard and it you know you need to go at it but get demon souls if you want to see yeah, what that you got it. You got it. Like... Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's just so nice. Mm. But um, I'm glad Dreams is on there as well because I do think mm. Dreams is one of those things that like, it's it gives me a headache just thinking about what <laughs> that is. Like, because it was in development for quite a long time, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. We had it popping up at EGXs for a couple years of years. Years and years. Yeah. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's like, and but it, but that will pay off because now, you know it will continue to evolve over time hmm. yeah definitely it keeps uh, they keep adding stuff to it um obviously the dreamers the dream creators out there keep making new things so there's you know just having the fact that it's a game but a development program and a, a hub to share all your creations as well yes. it's like you know no one's ever done anything like that before things have been done it's like media monocle have done things like that in the past with little big planet and stuff but not to this scale uh, yeah. and not with such like ease of creation like they've made making games uh incredibly simple uh if you know what you're doing with it so yeah, yeah that is definitely a technical achievement but not as much i'd say as <laughs> scanning in the entire world and allowing you to fly around it uh, <laughs> I... oh gosh yeah it's flight Microsoft Flight Simulator is um, is honestly one of the most incredible things I've played. What have played. they done recently? They've put the, the whole of the UK and Ireland in there or something? Yeah, was... so UK and Ireland were in there, but they were kind of like flat, almost like it's like they scanned a Google Maps almost. But Gosh. now they've added it so that they've used, and I don't know the words for the, the data <laughs> they've used, but now the buildings are where they should be they're the right size they don't look like little blobs from that have been kind of scanned in from google uh, maps and fudged to make it look like the right shape so you could get a plane you could fly across london and just like in Jeez. watchdogs legion where you can be like oh i remember that you know that looks familiar in flight simulator you're actually like there's my house yeah, that, that is crazy. That, where I get on the tube. Wow. That's, and uh, and the game itself is just, um, it's intoxicating and relaxing mm. and so chilled. You get up in there on a plane, you can fly around, you can pick where you want to go. Like I, when it first came out, I was, um, I took a little um, propeller plane and I started oh. in an airport in Okinawa <laughs> and I flew along the coast of Okinawa and like retraced. My so like awesome. places I went on my honeymoon. I was like, "There's oh. the, there's the Okinawa like ocean area, and there's the place we so stayed." And, awesome. Yeah, and it, it's you know you can go anywhere. You fly over the um, Himalayas. Uh, I did a video where I recreated famous film of flights, and I found a place oh, where yeah. they did a flight of the Navigator and uh, South by Southwest. Uh, no, North by Northwest or whatever <laughs> it is. South by Southwest, yeah. <laughs> That's the music festival. Uh, yeah, it's just... North, yeah, South North, by Southwest. Yeah. That really some, confused me for a some, second. Some kind of compass yeah. directions. Uh, yeah, uh, I just, I'm just draw dropping and I can't wait until we get our new PC so I can try I it in VR because I might never leave. Might I know. Stay in there I'm very excited <laughs> to see you do that as well because like you were playing that in very limited circumstances, as well, limiting circumstances, but mm. you still had a really good time with it. So Yeah, yeah. It makes my PC cry when it I does. load it up. <laughs> but oh my, what a what a game. Yeah. Uh, it, you feel like you literally have the world at your fingertips. Um, 
it's the ultimate sightseeing game. Yeah, that's so cool. That's a good way to put it, actually. The ultimate yeah. sightseeing game. I like that. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I mean, I guess Doom Eternal. I've, so I haven't played a lot of that. What, what would you say mm. makes that a technical achievement? Doom Eternal's a weird one because I am a huge fan of Doom and I wasn't a huge fan of Doom Eternal okay. because they kind of... I don't know whether this is counted in the technical achievement bit, but they kind of changed up the way the gameplay flow went a bit. And they added almost like a parrying mechanic to it with one of the bosses. Oh, interesting. Uh, Doom for me has always been like, big guns! Shooting! Rah, yeah. They're, I'm not trapped in a room with them. They're trapped <laughs> in a room with me! Ah. Like that. And this brought in a, like a, a new mon uh, boss called was it the Doom Hunter, I think he was called. Uh, and you had to time your shots to be able to kind of like parry him to weaken him. Otherwise, he'd just like knock you, like just completely knock okay. you down. Um, and I, I just found it didn't fit well with what my perception of, of Doom, Doom was. was but yeah. other people, yeah, other people absolutely loved it. And um, uh, they, they, you know, they think it changed the gameplay for, for the better. Okay. Uh, but technically, yeah, technically it is, a, you know, incredibly good looking fast flowing combat game with uh the best soundtrack ever <laughs> <laughs> actually that should have been in the soundtrack um oh yeah category. it's very metal isn't it yeah super metal i love yeah. it uh yeah I mean, it's technically a great game that does what it needs to do but it I, I wouldn't say it made my jaw drop as much right. as dreams or flight simulator or demon souls okay the Marauder, nice. that's it, Triggles. Thanks. Okay, uh, the Marauder. Hmm, mm -hmm. interesting. Watch out for them. Okay, <laughs> so with that, we are on to the last, uh, well, the last category. Ready. I know, which um, is is a brand new category as well. Nice. It is the EE Game of the Year, and mm -hmm. um, it is the first time that a Game of the Year uh, is... Uh, you have the ability well it's voted on by the public basically um so it's your fault out <laughs> there. If, if, if the one you want the, if you want you want to win doesn't win well yes fault. although it's also kind of my fault because i was on the jury that uh, <gasps> selected the shortlist for this game oh, okay. um and yeah so uh basically there was like a long list um and we chatted i don't know i don't want to say too much about it um because i don't know how much i'm allowed to say but we sort of chatted about like you know what what made these games stand out and you know what uh sort of yeah they're, i guess they're they're you know, they're excellent in general and and what they meant to people this year um mm. and i think i think this is a really strong shortlist and it's kind of um you know it sort of is is uh bringing together the best of some of the other categories as well and some of the other nominations. So we've got Animal Crossing New Horizons, Call mm -hmm. of Duty Warzone, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, The Last of Us Part Two, and Valorant. So I think that there's, again, there's a, a, like a good mix of genres in there mm. as well. Really good mix. Mm. Who do you think will, will win? You can vote for oh, this now, by the way. I should put a link in the chat, actually, to oh, you uh, where you can vote. go. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, hmm... If so, game of the year, I would vote for Animal Crossing. Would just you? Of the impact, yeah, because yeah. of the impact it had on all of our lives. Mm -hmm. I think um, that's at good. The time I would vote for that. Uh, Warzone is such a huge game, and I sunk so many hours into it that mm -hmm. maybe Power of Numbers uh, may could could pull that one through. Um, yeah. Last of Us Two, I think, was incredible, but a little bit divisive. Mm. So maybe that might cost it a few votes. Um, I don't think Valorant is big enough mm -hmm. to get a public vote. Um, Hades, though, um, could definitely win. Mm. Ghost of Tsushima again, good game, but I don't hear as many people talking about it as I do Animal Crossing, Hades, people... or Wolverine. The people who love Ghost of Tsushima really love Ghost of Tsushima. Mm. Like, it has some really dedicated hardcore fans. Um, but maybe you're right, you know. I think that, like, this is, you know, it's it's going to be, like, how big these communities are. And, um, 
I mean, they all, all of them do have pretty huge, very active communities, but I would, yeah. I would struggle to call which one of them is kind of going to tip it. But maybe I think just because of the, the, the year that we've had, I think that you're yeah. right. I think that Animal Crossing is probably a pretty, a pretty strong bet because it was just ubiquitous in 2020, wasn't it? Like it was just mm. everywhere and it, it, the things that it, it was really interesting because Animal Crossing is kind of, in many ways, it's kind of a single player game that is also multiplayer. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like it kind of, I think that the social aspect of it is its is its biggest strength because the things that you can actually do together in multiplayer are kind of limited. Would that be mm, fair to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are. But, but um, still, it didn't stop us from having no. awesome times and streams. Oh, that's it. not. Yeah, that's not to bash on it at all. I think that that's mm. a really strong thing, and it's like it's it's really a credit to yeah. um, Nintendo's design, right? That it that it that even though it was light on actual. Hmm. multiplayer i get i guess it's just it's just not typical multiplayer because it's not like here are some challenges you can do together here are hmm. some co -op. like it literally just gives you this little world and you yeah. make the fun and yeah that's it's really like, strong come and look at the world i made let's yeah. hang out for a bit and just chill mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> nice. exactly that nice. uh like you know, if I was to look back over my Twitter feed of the entire year gone, mm -hmm. the ones that would have come up multiple times would be Hades, Warzone, and Animal Crossing. Uh, yeah. So many people gushing over Hades yeah. and um, the sexy, sexy characters in mm -hmm. it. <laughs> and then, yeah, Warzone has a huge online community. Yeah. And then That's Animal awesome. Crossing was just, of course, mm -hmm. um, everywhere. So. It's a really yeah, interesting year for these because obviously the last year um, when these nom like this this we were just saying before the stream started the last time that we were in the office was literally for the last time I saw you in person Ian was the last stream of this that we did last year in wow. the, in the office <laughs> our BAFTA nomination stream that was the last day we were all in the office together which is Crikey. yeah right like but so obviously you know that this happened very much at at the time of the last BAFTA Games Awards mm. this year is going to be so interesting because the world has changed right yeah completely in in the last year but and games were one of the kind of one of the few things that we could all continue to play together safely um and certainly for for me and I know for a lot of other people they were a real uh life life raft right like mm. they kind of kept our spirits up i mean on this channel you know we we sort of leaned on games a lot to kind of you know uh just just see us through some really tough times and i think that uh, the the games that have sort of really stood out in these nominations are the games that you know have really displayed um in different ways the way that they kind of help people out in the last year you know whether they provided some cutesy escapism and you know sort of t time to spend with your friends or yeah. they like just bashed you around the head with feelings <laughs> um in the case of the last was part two or they just um like hades for me was something that like i loved being able to come back to again and again mm. because it was familiar but it was also different every single time and like it was just it was like it was like solving a puzzle in a lot of ways but there was there was always that element of um you know of randomization with with regards to what weapons and boons you get it was just yeah. so good that it was just like it was just endless entertainment and i pl i played it pretty much all over the the christmas break um and yeah and now i want to play it again because i played it a bit on the stream <laughs> <laughs> i really i need to buy it for the switch definitely yeah. i really do so what, um, what what are your top picks out of everything well my top picks out of everything um i i will be sad if half-life alex doesn't win an award mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um it's such a fantastic game uh that needs more people to play it, it mm -hmm. uh, hopefully more people can play it at some point uh and you know if anything that helps vr come into the public conscience is good by me so if it wins a, if, it, if it wins an award and people can say oh, vr games won a you know a, yeah. a, a bafta you yeah. know that's going to be great uh, last of us part two i 
do hope wins at least one award. I mean, they're up for 13. They're surely what they've got to get one uh, but but you never know just, you never know yeah that's true yeah. um yeah that one uh you know i've loved it i even though it was hard at times i absolutely loved it yeah um yeah and four guys mm-hmm. four guys has made me laugh a lot this year so. <laughs> that's awesome yeah well there's some really really great uh nominees in there and it's it's really nice to see that um like eight of the 12 performance nominees are all first time nominees. So there is a lot of new, new voices and new names in there, which is really Mm. nice to see. Um, so yeah, the awards are going to be streamed, uh, this year on the 25th of March. Um, with which is a bit earlier than usual but a, a week or so mm. earlier um with a brand new host uh the wonderful l osley wood um Ooh. who's going to be amazing um and also it's going to be the first time the awards are going to be streamed on steam um so that's pretty exciting they're going to be available Ooh, across lots of different platforms but this is the first time they're going to be on steam as well which is really cool um Ooh, so might we maybe do some kind of reaction stream there? who can say i i <laughs> don't know uh but we but we will i'm sure uh you know there will be there will be some some content around it uh but mm-hmm. uh, but you know everyone should tune into the awards regardless because hey it's very very important i think to celebrate games um and this year in particular, I think it's very important to celebrate the games that have kind of meant a lot to us. And these are all very, very, very strong uh, nominees, I think. Yes, they yes. are. They are all very good. Um, it has, it may not have been a very nice 2020, but there were some incredible treats for us mm-hmm. to play. Yes. Um, and it would be nice to celebrate them. Yes. For sure. 100%. So do yes. go and um, give a, uh, Give BAFTA Games a follow on Twitter um, to keep up to date with uh, what they're up to, um, because they're going to do a lot of uh, a lot of chats and stuff around the nominees uh, leading up to the awards themselves. Because the awards will be a little different than previous years, um, but they're going to be awesome. I'm very very excited. Um, and yeah, let us know in the comments what your uh, favorite picks are. I wonder if there's any if there's any gaps in in games that we've played. Maybe we can stream some um coming up to the awards as well because you know they, they, they're, there's some some great ones here that i haven't played yet but yeah i really i've i've slept on kentucky route zero and i hear so many good things about that mm, but um, yeah it's been, out, it's been out for a while so yeah that's one i need to uh try and get some time to play mm-hmm. Excellent. Well, so th- th- we're almost two hours on the button as well since we started, so that's good. Um, but right. yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, what else have we got coming up this week, Ian? Well, We've- coming up this week, uh, we have got, let's have a look at the schedule. <laughs> so there's a game coming out um, that is already out um, previously on uh, various consoles but uh, coming out uh, this week is mortal shell enhanced mm-hmm. edition i'm going to be streaming that on thursday i believe and i'm also going to be um putting together a, a list feature for that uh, i'm also taking a look at a vr game on sunday um, an upcoming vr game called wraith the oblivion afterlife Ooh. of that uh, so that should be quite exciting Ooh. and then um, yeah, perhaps maybe some Sea of Thieves on maybe, Friday. Maybe, maybe we'll see. Definitely some more streams this week. We will yes. uh, we will keep you posted as to, to what will be what. But uh, obviously, a brand new video every day. So, mm-hmm. you know, subscribe if you haven't. Or yes. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> no, just, we won't, we won't. No. We won't. Well, so, uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, before <laughs> we go, shall we play this uh, the BAFTA nominees video one more time? Go on, then, just go on just then. for the funs, for the f- the fun of it. Let's do it. Here we go. Oh, I've lost my lip. I can't play it at the same time. Never mind. <laughs> I'll tell you. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Ooh, oh. Ah. Oh. Mm. Oh. Ah. Ah. <laughs> we. I would do oh. it all over again. Yes, like that one. <laughs> Nothing happened. You're alive oh, now. In fairness, though, these these uh, montages always really make me want to play games. Mm. 
Everyone at Night City HQ is on edge. I'll make her pay. <laughs> Do you surrender? Yes. I'm with you every step of the way. We're gonna have to fight to get out of this, okay? This is what makes us samurai. I did, it, yeah. We've got a family. She doesn't get to be more important than that. Who do you think yeah, you're talking to? I promise. I killed you with my own. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Awesome. That was an excellent sizzle reeling. Mm -hmm. We do love a good sizzle reel. Okie doke. So we do. All right. Well, we will see you all very soon. Yes. I'm. I'm off to. Uh, I'm off to do my vote for the EE game of the year. Yes. Um, I pinned the link to that at the top of the chat. Thanks to Nightcap for posting that. So if you do want to vote for the ee game of the year as well if you want to uh, vote for one of your favorites then uh, that link is pinned to the top of the youtube chat right now so <laughs> awesome all right we will see you soon guys bye bye